Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Stock Talk. This is a little podcast slash video that I like to put together once a week where I like to talk about all things investing, talk about what's going on in the market, talk about my own observations about what's going on in the market, share with you some other perspectives from other people uh, that you know all about the market, and also share with you some of my own personal investment decisions, and more importantly, how I go about making them. Really, the, the goal is just to share with you those ideas, and hopefully you can take some of these ideas and nuggets of information and kind of bring it back to your own little personal situation, and it'll hopefully help you frame your investment decisions a little bit better. My name is Amin Reina, and I'm an investment coach and founder of Sage Investors. And what I do as an investment coach, because a lot of people don't really know, it's a very new concept. What I do as, a, as an investment coach is, is I work with people who wanna, I try to help people who wanna become more financially independent, but they feel kind of intimidated and confused and frustrated by this whole investing concept. They either don't know where to start if they're new to investing or if they've been investing for a long period of time, they just aren't seeing their portfolios progress like the way they thought it would. And so what I do as an investment coach is I teach people I engage with them on how to make more successful, educated and successful investment decisions so that they can achieve a certain level of financial freedom in their lives and, and achieve it with confidence. So this is episode 99 and it's the episode before the big 100. And so I thought today, um, instead of doing this on the 100th episode, I thought I would do this now, uh, which is really essentially, I just wanted to take uh, just take a little bit of a recap on what I've done, because honestly, like honestly, didn't think I would have any element of doing, you know, ten episodes, and now it just, you know, it's it's a bit. I'm really uh, quite proud and surprised and amazed that I've been able to do this for so long. And uh, just today is just really a trip down memory memory lane and look at some of the some of the highlights really of of, of the last hundred episodes that I've been able to put together. Um, I think that what's really interesting about this is that this whole thing, this whole stock talk thing that I've been doing is really didn't start out as a podcast. It started off as a bunch of periscopes that I did. And I just go on periscope and talk about in whatever I thought about investing in for 10 minutes and <clears throat> that would be the end of it. But it, it's amazing. Um, then after a while somebody told me, you know what, you should take your episodes and put it in podcast form and I think more people would find it interesting. And, and I'd and so I did that. I said, okay, that's a cool idea. And little to that, to my incredible surprise, it's amazing um, how many people are listening to this now compared to what they were listening to the Periscopes. Like now I've just crossed um, almost 12,000 downloads in the last eight months. And I don't know, it's not like, you know, scandal or whatever or that stuff. But, uh, you know, it's to me like 12,000 people like, downloading this stuff is quite amazing and I'm quite proud and I'm quite thankful to you for actually willing to take the time to listen to what I have to say and hopefully the stuff that I've been sharing with you is of value. Um, and I'm kind of humbled in a way that that, that, that many people have uh, been been able to uh, reach out there and, and uh, listen into some of the some of the perspectives that I've hopefully been able to bring with investing. Um, the other thing I've, I'm actually kind of proud of is just the format. Like for those of you who've been following and listening on my podcast, it's basically been me talking. <laughs> I'm just talking. I've not had any guests. Um, I've been asked to invite guests, but I've been I've been just because for me it's really more of a personal thing. I just I just want to jump on here and just and share with you what I think about what's going on in the market. And a lot of times, you know, a lot more common. A lot of podcasts, most podcasts, pretty much have like. A conversation with a bunch of people, an interview kind of thing, and to me, there's just I just want to talk about investing and just forget about all the chatter and all the like Regis and Kathy Lee, what did you do last night for dinner kind of thing. Your time is so valuable, and I just want to max out whatever time I can get with you. Uh, I just want to max it out and just talk about the substance and forget about the style. So. Um, that's another thing that's jumped out at me is just the ability. My, I didn't think I would have anything to talk about. I thought I'd be struggling to figure out what to talk about. And the fact that I've put together a hundred episodes of these things on so many different topics, which I'm going to share with you some of the themes that have come out in the last hundred episodes. Um, yeah, I'm floored. I think that's what I love about doing this because there's no shortage of topics. I, I think I've learned, discovered this. There's endless amounts of things. You know, when we're talking about stocks and ETFs and the markets uh, that, that we can talk about. So. 
That's cool. I look back at my first episode and it's actually January 2016 and it was all about um, goals, setting goals for the upcoming year and it was talking about you know having a plan, having an ideology and finding your right investing path, making sure you're staying on your true investing path and little did I realize that that first episode actually provided a lot of ingredients for my ultimate, for my creation of uh, my coaching program called Beginning Your Investing Journey, where I help people who are new to investing try to figure out what their investing path is. So it's, it's, it's so amazing that that one, that very first episode actually led to the creation of, 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 of this coaching program that I created. And I've kind of enjoyed it because it's one of my, I'm really, Excited about it because it's really an opportunity to get people on the right investing path. So who, little did I know that that first episode would, would be the seeds to create that. Um, it's interesting also that they're just, I'm just going down the list of some of the kind of my favorite episodes um, over the past 100 was the ones on hip hop investing where I took, I found like kind of found kind of one of the things I like to do is try to take investing and bring it down to more easy to understand concepts. So it was funny to see, I came across a couple of articles uh, where this, where people kind of try to take Wu-Tang Clan and hip hop, and, you know, hip hop terminology and break it down into sort of like easier to understand investing concepts. So I shared, you know, episode three and episode 46, I talk about hip hop investing, which, you know, who the hell would have thought like hip hop and investing could actually complement each other? Well, there you go. Um, probably one of my key things I've always wanted, uh, I've tried to do with, with the podcast has been to be transparent. It's, to, it's part of my brand in terms of my, my practice is to be transparent in terms of how I make investment decisions. So, you know, it's one thing for me to teach people how to invest. It's another thing to practice what you teach. And uh, some of the more popular episodes, uh, downloads uh, of the 100 episodes have been the ones where I've talked about my own personal investment decisions and kind of walking you through how I go about, how I went about making these decisions. And it's all about asking the right questions, having that framework of asking questions and then coming out of it with a bit of an idea on how, you know, an idea of whether you want to buy or sell a stock. And so some of the more popular episodes have been about the investing decision episodes. And so I like doing those and I'm definitely going to keep doing those ones for sure. Um, I talk a lot about the psychology of investing, you know, that behavioral side of investing. I did a whole bunch of uh, episodes talking about you know, emotional investing. That was episode 31. I talk about one of the hardest things to do in investing, which was doing nothing. Because as humans, we're so wired into, like if something goes wrong, we have to do something. And investing sometimes, and a lot of times, just reacting to, to a certain, uh, something in the market or something going on with a stock is actually can be like one of the worst things you wanna do. So I talk a little bit about that in, in what was it, episode 19. Um, Consensus estimating, following the herd. That's one of the biggest uh, biases that screw people up when making decisions. I talked about that in episode 16. The whole FOMO concept, you know? Markets setting record highs on a daily basis, but you're not in the market and you kind of feel like, hey, I think I should be. And you get into it because of that fear of missing out. We talk about, it. these are all like emotional things that are really the secret sauce that are gonna separate run-of-the-mill investors between great investors and just having that awareness of these biases. So I, I, I spent quite a few episodes talking about that. Of course, I talked also about different trends in the investing world. We talk, talked a little bit about whole, this whole concept of smart beta, low volatility, um, robo-advisors, my, you know, um, my personal experience with robo-advisors. One of the things that's really big out there is this whole robo-advisor online investing platform. And so I've been kind of doing this experiment where I've just invested in a robo-advisor and kind of mapped the whole experience out. And so I've shared that with you in a bunch of episodes and will continue to share with you my journey working with a robo-advisor. Um, Bitcoin. I never thought I would do an episode on Bitcoin, but there you go. I did, I did a whole, almost like a self-learning seminar because I didn't know anything about Bitcoin. So I actually did an episode where I tried to figure out what the hell this is all about. Um, ETFs. Probably the most dominant investing product out there in the last 20 years has been um, ETFs. And there's no shortage. I've hopefully been able to provide um, perspectives, good perspectives and bad perspectives um, about ETFs because there's that ongoing running debate between the whole actively managed traditional investing platforms and 
the new exchange traded investing philosophy ideology and there's good things about both and there's bad things about both and hopefully I've been able to share with you some of those per, per, uh, perspectives. Um, talked about millennials, talked about millennials and how they're kind of going to change the way and are influencing the way that the industry is marketing to them. Um, and also talk some about behavioral aspects of sort of the younger generation and how they make investment decisions. Uh, um, a lot of research out there talking about how when we're in our younger years, we're more prone to making um, bad investment decisions. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I weighed into it on, on, uh, on a couple of episodes. Um, and also the other dominant theme I've kind of dedicated to in these episodes into Stock Talk has been <sighs> the Mad King. Um, Probably one of my favorite episodes, and probably one of the, uh, I think it's one of the most downloaded episodes, is the one where I talked about uh, Wall Street and hot tub time machines, where essentially what Trump is trying to do is kind of roll back the clock. He wants to take us back to the time before Dodds Frank, before the financial crisis, where you know you had Glass Steagall, and basically financial companies were just be able to do whatever the hell they wanted to do and do it unchecked. He wants to take us back there, and there's implications to doing that. And uh, essentially, he just wants us to go back in a time machine and go back to the 19 whatever 70s or whatever, and uh, do that. And so I weighed in on that. It provides some perspective. It was one of the most top uh, downloads I've, I had there. And finally, actually, the one of the most downloaded episodes that I did uh, was a book report or a book review, where I reviewed um, John Chevro and Michael Drack's uh, book called Victory Lab, uh, talking about how you know retirement isn't just you know sending your papers and going and sipping pina coladas. There's a transition. There's a, there's a real emotional, phys physical, mental um, transition that has to take place, and you need to be prepared for it. And uh, um, the book Victory Lab does a really great job in kind of preparing us um, to get us to start thinking about the things we want to do pre-retirement because you don't just stop working, you have to continue to stimulate yourself, to push yourself, to challenge yourself and they do a really great job of giving you ideas on how to do that. It's actually, if it's not the most top downloaded episode, it's probably in the top three um, from that perspective. So, you know, it's just amazing, you know, in the 100 episodes that I've been able to cover such a wide variety of topics in investing and I, honestly when I started with episode one I honestly said I, I don't know where the hell I'm gonna get like three episodes because I don't know where the hell to talk about and when I look at what I've been able to share with you um, I'm like wow and the fact of the matter is that the fact that you've been so receptive to it and have been willing to you know just carve out a little piece, please, piece of your uh, phone <laughs> Uh, or a computer to listen to some of my stuff and some of my perspectives and some of my takes on investing and the markets as a whole is is quite humbling and I hope to continue it so we've got a hundred down and hopefully I can plow through for another hundred for you in the next uh, next while and it all starts with the next episode which will be in episode 100 100 so that's kind of all I got for you. If you have any questions, if you have any ideas for future episodes that you might want me to kind of offer some takes on, um, give me a shout. There's so many ways you can get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me through my Facebook page, which I've just created a while ago, Sage Investors. Just do a search there. Drop a question on there. I'm more than happy to answer it. Um, through my website, sageinvestors.ca, I have information about what investment coaching is, what I do as an investment coach, the various courses that I teach in person and online um, that I have. Um, so all kinds of stuff there and you can follow me on Twitter my handle is at Sage Investors um, so I'm on there all the time basically commenting in real time what's going on in the market my takes on what's going on in the market sharing with you some really cool information um, by people that are I think know more about investing than I do so getting wired into those kind of perspectives and finally, if you're interested, I actually do send out a weekly email. Uh, every Wednesday morning, I send out a weekly email to people who are interested. I call it In The Loop, where I just share with you stuff that I'm reading, um, research, um, investment research, commentary, ideas uh, about what I'm reading and that I'm kind of thinking about as I'm framing my own investment decisions, sharing with you a dashboard of sort of like the economic landscape of what's going on in terms of interest rates, the dollar, inflation, stuff like that. 
And uh, also, you know, all my latest blogs, podcasts, videos, uh, mind map videos that I do on there. So all you have to do is just go to my homepage, sageinvestors.ca, and just drop your email. And every Wednesday morning before you wake up, it'll be in your mailbox. So if you're into that. So that's all I got for you on the episode before my 100th episode. Uh, thank you very much again. I just have to say thank you so much for listening. Uh, and for those of you who have subscribed to my podcast uh, through my website or through iTunes, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope to uh, offer you some more stuff in the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so I'll see you for episode 100 shortly. And uh, thank you again for listening in. My name is Amon Reina of Sage Investors. And I'll catch you again another time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.